What's up guys? Welcome to another week of Cart Talk this week. Has Max come on? Max, thank you so much for coming on. Basically, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna start off, you grew up in California? Yep. What part of California? Uh, Los Angeles, Northern Los Angeles. So you, so you were in the thick of it. Like you were around like all of the air quote famous people. Or were you in that crowd or did you just kind of? I was in the Magic Mountain crowd, the theme park. But uh, I will say that my mom, my mom's a big like, you know, reality TV person, like real world was her favorite show type person when she's, you know, 50. And uh, so my mom, when friends would come to town would do, they have those like, uh, tour bus rides where it's like uh, see where the stars live my mom no. knew where all they live where, where they all live so she would take our friends on tour so no. I wouldn't say I was immersed in it but uh, I mean you're around it a little bit okay but that's totally amazing so like how how far I don't know like LA that well so how far out I it. was, I'm 18 miles from like okay. Santa Monica. So we would, when we got older, we would go down like cruise Venice okay. a little bit, but um, didn't really get to go out, out in LA or anything until obviously I was old enough. But uh, it's okay, funny, my wife, course. Lacey went to, uh, she lived in West Hollywood for a while. So her stories are way cooler than mine ever were, but uh, oh, so, so she I'm basically grew up in, in California. She grew well. up in Southern California in uh, Murrieta, but then lived in West Hollywood when she was 21, 22. Okay. So she's got all like the cool, like her, her claim to fame is Bone Thugs and Harmony got her into a club one time. So she's got way cooler Okay, so she, I should have her on yes, the show. Yes, she's way Okay, more basically than next I time I have her available, <laughs> yes. I'm gonna have her on. Yeah. Um, so when did you start playing the game of golf? Uh, I was young, I was like two or three. We grew up in, uh, I grew up in uh, Burbank, uh, California, and there's a driving range at Griffith Park, and I guess my dad would, I don't remember this, but my dad would come home and go hit balls, and I'd be waiting for him with my little, like, you know, no, plastic stuff of gloves when I go hit, I don't know. We have to find But uh, yeah, so that's, I got started, and then I got lucky, where we moved to Valencia, my hometown, um, they had a par three course and a par 61, and that's where we would go, and there was a great junior program, so like everybody, uh, I think I was six years old when I played my first little father-son thing, uh, at the par three course called Chica, and all my friends went there, so it was uh, it was kind of an ideal situation to uh, kind of learn golf in. So your dad's obviously into the sport. It's so ironic because some people will say, "Oh yeah, my dad had absolutely nothing to do with yeah. it. I was just good." And you know, in your case, your dad was totally involved. And and speaking of being good, when did you realize, okay, I'm not like the other six year olds? Um, <laughs> I don't you, know, like, I'm man. Different. It takes a while. The, the, my buddy Pete that I play with today, he played uh, college basketball, and we talk about this a lot that. I think people who become successful in sports and uh, I'll just speak to golf have like a perfect amount of delusion. Okay. So like I just think like anytime any teacher or any person ever asked me like what are you going to do with your life I said I'm going to play on the PGA Tour when they said well if that doesn't work what would you do and I'd look at him and be like why the hell would that not work. Yeah you know? okay I love so, that. So like you need a little bit of that but I, I don't know the first time I knew and I think in my heart that like I would make it is um, really when I got to college I played the US Amateur and I made the quarterfinals and then I kind of was like, okay, like I'm gonna probably be able to do this if I keep kind of going about the path that I'm on. Uh, but, you know, everybody, it, it's a, Southern California is a competitive golf environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's hard to ever feel super confident, but I was also around people that were great and, and it was easy to up. be, yeah, yes. you keep up a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. at least you're in the right. You're, you're in the, the room. running. Yeah, yeah, you're in the running. So you went, where did you go to university? I went to Cal up okay. in Berkeley. So I went, I wanted to go to UCLA, didn't get in, uh, and was fortunate not to, because as my, as, as I joke, my mom probably would have been basically living at my dorm. <laughs> So I'm glad I Your went mom further seems to like. Is she like a little? Is she like a little party girl a little bit? No, she, no, oh. no. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm. My mom is Jewish. I'm half Jewish. So okay. The stigma is, you know, Jewish moms are very uh, <laughs> Fair. attached. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. They uh, want their yeah. son to leave. So okay. So you went there four years, but wait. What I was gonna ask you, what was your major? I know you said you didn't think of anything else, but what was your major in college? Uh, it was a in interdisciplinary studies. It was a athlete major for okay. people who couldn't get into the business school. So it was uh, interdisciplinary studies and you had a focus, it was consumer behavior and globalization. Couldn't tell you what that all means. Uh, but it was kind of like sociology. But uh, I wanted to do business. Cal business school is way too hard for me. So that was my next best option. So you went to four years. Uh, graduated college and then when did you get your pro card? Uh, so my right when I turned pro I played the Walker Cup uh, at the end of the summer and then I, they gave me a start into the fries.com which is now the Fortinet mm -hmm. and uh, so that was my first pro start and I got ninth um, and then got into the next week and got 30th in Vegas and then went to Q school and got my card that way so I, I 
guess I got my Corn Ferry card uh, in 2013 and got okay. to play a bunch of tour events in 2014 as well. So I know you've been through a lot of different tournaments, a lot of different situations in your life. If you can think of one, you know, maybe not winning a tournament, but maybe one moment in golf that was like so pinnacle for you and, and something that was like, okay, looking back as, as you know, the people were asking you in grade school, what do you want to be? And you're like, okay, well, I am that person. I am that golfer. I have officially like made it here and fulfilled my dream. Oh, that's tough. That I mean, tough. Easy, the easy answer is I, when I won the Wells Fargo in 19, I would say like, that's when I, you know, it felt like I was on top of the world, but my, my moment, uh, I went through a really bad year or two in 2017. I played terrible, made two cuts and like 17 starts on tour, lost my card. And then uh, was on the outside looking in to make the playoffs on the Corn Ferry Tour at the time web.com and I had four holes to go on Friday to make the cut uh, and, and and get into those playoffs and uh, I birdied 15, 16, 17, 18, got my card by or got into the playoffs by one, played great in the playoffs, got my card back and then that led to the night win in 19 so that was that's always that's my moment that, that was my uh that, that's the one I look back on all the time and just think, man, if that had not gone the way it did, things could be uh, very different. So you're able to make it and be able to always have that outer drive of not being able to always make it, which probably is beneficial for you as a player. I think so, yeah. What do you think is the hardest thing for you to stay on track or stay focused? Is it the workouts? Is it the range sesh? Or, mm. you know, what is the hardest thing for you to do to be able to stay consistent as a player? Mine is a mental stuff. Okay. I just never really looked at it as being tangible. I'm learning that it is. But, you know, if you hit the ball a certain way one day, there's a stat that says this is where you rank. And there's no stat for how your mental game is. Yeah. And if I could just be better at something consistently, I would, I would say that that would be what I'd like it, I would, what I would like to be consistent at. I, I want to have the same mindset every day. I want to have the same positivity every day. That's, uh, but yeah. that's the part that kind of, it's a work in progress. Well, Max, this is why people love you is because you're very <laughs> relatable. I think everyone listening to that can relate to the fact that the mental stuff is probably the toughest part of this game. That is all for me today. I just had a few questions for you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for letting us get to know you a little bit better. Thank you.